You know what frustrates me? It's this gap. This gap between uh, who I know I can be and who I really am today. If I'm not careful, uh, I can get a real distorted view of how God sees me and quite honestly how I see God. Uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes the greatest battle in my life is the battle between these two ears. And the truth of Philippians chapter 3 is always helpful to me as I relate so much to this guy named Paul. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Bible, I'm a Bible guy. If you're not, that's quite all right. Let me be one. Uh, and one of the most famous men in the New Testament is a guy named Paul. He, we meet him. Uh, his name was Saul, and he was one who had given his life to persecuting Christians. He was doing everything he could to imprison them, to lead them to their death, to separate families. And in a miraculous way, on a road to a place called Damascus, uh, God met him there, and he blinded him, and he told him that he was basically, you're playing for the wrong team. And Paul, uh, because he was so sincere, which, by the way, we can be sincere and still be sincerely wrong, uh, Paul saw the error of his ways, and he was brought into God's family. It was really crazy, probably as miraculous as God meeting him and blinding him and then bringing his sight back was the fact that this very people that he was trying to persecute welcomed him as brothers. Uh, and God changed his name from Saul to Paul. He wrote, oh, almost two-thirds of the New Testament. I identify with him because he talks about a thorn in the flesh, about something he really wanted God to take away from him. And he kept asking God, and God said no, and he finally discovered that it was in his weakness that God's strength showed up, which is kind of the theme of my life as well. And in this book of to, uh, called Philippians, it's just a book written to a church in a city called uh, Philippi, so they call it Philippians. He talks about this battle to keep his eyes focused in the right direction. Now, I have been to Philippi. I have sat in the place where they think Paul wrote these words, and he's looking out over this place where all of the people of that region would come for what we know as the Olympics. It would come for these athletic contests, most of them being runners. And Paul looks out in Philippians 3, over remembers that place in Philippi, and he says this. He says, uh, man, if there's one thing I do, I try to do this, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press forward uh, so I might see myself, this is my paraphrase, I might see myself the way Jesus sees me. Wouldn't it be great if every day you uh, could forget what was behind and strain toward what is ahead? Have you thought about how much energy you use uh, regretting past mistakes? Uh, do you ever consider, like me, how what you do becomes who you are? And sometimes if you're battling depression, then you think your identity is one as being uh, depressed. If you are divorced, you see yourself as a divorcee. But that's not how God sees you. And so Paul says, I can't look behind me because it robs me of the chance to see who myself as God sees me and see what God has in front of me. By the way, you can't look beside yourself either. You start doing the comparison game. Only two things happen. You find somebody doing worse than you and you get proud. And the Bible says God opposes the proud. Or you see someone doing better than you and you get defeated. We're focused on progress, not perfection in this game of life. And like Paul, the only thing we can do is we can fix our eyes forward. Uh, one of the things we like to say here at Gobi is eyes up, eyes up. One of the uh, three pillars of what we teach adults, what we teach parents, what we teach kids is keep your eyes up. Why? Because when I'm looking at myself and my problems, my problems get bigger and God gets smaller. But when I'm, when I'm pressing forward, when my eyes are up, when my goal is the prize of real, lasting, abundant relationship with the one that created me, uh, when, that's, 
my goal, then God gets bigger and the possibilities and potential get bigger and I don't lose my hope. See, I'm just a believer that hope changes everything. When I say hope, I'm not talking about wishful thinking. Uh, I'm not talking about hoping that you get a bicycle for Christmas if you're a youngster. I don't, I'm not talking about hoping that things turns around. I'm talking about hope is confident expectation that at some point, I and my, uh, my condition is going to match my identity in Christ. Well, what do you mean by that, Toby? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, the gap for most of us is the gap between our condition uh, and our position as God describes our position. For instance, I know very clearly that the one that created me says that I am more than a conqueror. But when I find myself feeling defeated, which is my position, I have a, a condition. I have a hard time remembering that my position is a conqueror. I know that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That is my position. But sometimes in my current condition, when the week is difficult, when my will wears down, when I'm physically, emotionally, relationally exhausted, I begin to believe that my identity is one who doesn't have enough strength. It's when you and I say things like this, things will never change. They'll never get better. Do you know how many defeated people I talk to? Every week, honestly, because of what we do here at Gobi and the, the hundreds, literally, no preacher count, hundreds of people that I get to talk to, college students, uh, those pastors leading churches, uh, stay-at-home moms, uh, professional women, uh, men who have achieved much in the marketplace, uh, their, their challenge is they're losing hope. And they say this to me in some form or fashion, I just think it's always going to be this way. And that's what happens when I look behind me or if I'm looking even beside me. And so like Paul, I want to keep my eyes up. I want to be looking forward. I want to uh, believe in the potential of my life because the one who created me tells me that my potential is, in fact, it's exceedingly abundantly beyond what I could even ask or imagine. Why? Because there is a power in me that is beyond me. Does it mean that it's not difficult? No, it doesn't. Uh, does it mean that you always win? No. I go through seasons where I win more than I lose. I lose more than I win. Uh, and I think redefining winning is not the absence of problems, but the ability, the power connected to a power greater than myself that gives me the power to overcome is what real freedom really is. And I will never find that even when I'm looking inward, I must be looking upward in my life to discover who God really calls me to be. So what does it mean to keep your eyes up? Well, it means a couple of things for me. It means for me, daily practices that remind me of things that I already know to be true, but maybe have a hard time feeling them to be true. Uh, one of the most often distributed tools for Gobi has been the 40 I Ams. It's 40 statements about reminding me of who my creator says that I am. And I have the cards from almost 20 years ago that I carry everywhere with me. And I pull them out and I pick a couple every day and I say them out loud. And over the past few months, we've built versions of these cards for uh, kids, for students. Uh, and before you know it, in the next month or so, we will be releasing a brand new version of the 40 I Am's that is connected to a journal that you can use every day to keep your eyes up and remember who you really are in God. That's one of the things I would tell you. I would say this, secondly, be very careful about guarding your heart and your mind in seasons when you're struggling. I had a friend many years ago who's marriage uh, was not going well at all. And I knew it because his wife had called and told me about it. And I asked her what her husband was doing. She said he comes home every day and puts on the saddest music that he can possibly find and just lives in his misery. Uh, and it reminded me of an important concept that, that I become what I think. And I, I may not, you go, well, I can't manage my thoughts. 
Okay, well, you can manage the atmosphere around you that leads to the kind of thoughts that you want to have. It's why the Bible says whatever's good, whatever lovely, whatever uh, brings strength and peace to you, set your mind on those things. So I want to have daily practices like the 40 I am's. Uh, I want uh, to make sure around me there's an atmosphere that is speaking life into me. And number three, I want to be connected to other runners in the race. Uh, I don't know if there's anything worse on the planet than running a long race alone. I mean, now I'm an extrovert, but I know dozens of introverts uh, who train for marathons, half marathons, ultra marathons. Uh, my son is a runner. My son uh, loves the thrill of training his body uh, to run a race. He's extremely introverted, but he would tell you if he was sitting here today, his preference would not be to run a long distance by himself. Why? Because when, when you run by yourself, you kind of get in your head a little bit. Uh, you need somebody there that's telling you, come on, we can do it. Uh, you need somebody there who goes, I know, who's, when they're struggling, you can pick them up. When you're struggling, they can pick you up. It makes you a much better runner in this race. And you need people in your life that are speaking to you beyond what you're feeling and telling you what reality is. You need somebody who's saying to you, uh, yeah, I know it's hard, but you can do hard things because we're not alone. You, you need people who are saying, hey, you've got more strength You've got more power than you think you have because the one who created you now lives in you. Sometimes it's hard in the moment of this race called life to feel it. So I need someone in my life and so do you that can tell you the truth about it. So my heart for you today is that you would get your eyes up. In fact, uh, at our website, uh, beagobi.com, if you go there and you look uh, in the uh, merchandise section, we have shirts that we've made that say eyes up why just so that we can remember to keep our eyes up to not be looking beside us or behind us but to press forward like paul to win that what he calls the heavenly prize or what i believe he's talking about is an abundant rich peaceful life internally in the person of jesus christ come on you can do it get your eyes up